Buying fish online can be expensive, 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars for shipping, but for some people that actually might be cheaper than going to the actual fish store. So we're gonna talk about that today. I also think I found a pretty good spot to buy the fish if you've been thinking about it already. It's been a pretty long time since I've bought fish online, but we need something to put in our ancient gardens tank that has been fishless or pretty much fishless for super, super long. Don't worry, I'll go through my whole rationale for why we did this, why we chose to buy the fish online instead of going to the fish store. That'll be kind of the whole point of this video other than showing off the cool new fish that I got. But they're here, we got them approximately one day after we ordered them from the wet spot. These fish didn't have to travel very far. I guess it doesn't really matter though since you're gonna get the one day UPS shipping pretty much no matter what. So I don't expect these fish to be in bad shape shape at all. I think they're going to be pretty much just exactly the same as if we would have put them in our car and brought them home ourselves. Nice styrofoam container with some heat packs. I should say this video is not sponsored by the wet spot in any way shape or form. They don't even know I'm making this video. I've never actually bought fish online from them before either. Kind of wanted to try it out to see. All right there is three fish in here. There is 30 fish in here and 12 wild fish in here. So cliffhanger we need to go back in time whenever I get new fish it's not a lot these days I know but whenever I do I like to make sure the tank is in the best condition possible not just because I show off my fish in aquariums to the internet but because it just makes me feel a little bit better about putting them into a tank that they haven't been in before I know it's kind of weird but it's just nice and it's a good opportunity to get your tank looking a little bit better. The Ancient Gardens tank has been on kind of a roller coaster since we set it up. I need to do a detailed video on how we pulled it back from two different battles with some pretty big issues in it to the state that it's in now, which is looking pretty good. It's far from perfect though. I mean, there's quite a bit of algae down here in the hair grass. There's green spot on the back wall. And it might be kind of hard to see without the right angle here, but, but there is some staghorn that's attached itself to some of the Monte Carlo. And we have this sort of obnoxious pinnatophyta that grew too big because it's not getting enough light. We want to remove that. We need to do a little bit of work to this aquarium before I think it's going to be perfect for the fish. Here's a tip for you though on just general tank maintenance. Start with the least messy thing you need to do and work your way up to the messiest thing. That way when you go to change your water, you're doing the thing that is the messiest and hopefully you can collect as much of that waste that's gonna come off in that mess as possible. The first thing we wanna do, especially if our tank is about to get really messy, which it's not, but we're still gonna do it anyway, is turn your filter off. This is gonna help prevent us from adding more waste into the filter, slowing it down than if we were to not do this. So the least messy thing for us in this circumstance is gonna be picking off the staghorn algae because there is no chemical that I know of or amount of water changes we can do to just get rid of this stuff. I don't think it comes on from an excess of nutrients. Could be wrong, I just, I really don't know. I seldom see it in my aquariums, but when I do, I usually just go through a manual removal process, painstakingly go through and pick as much of it out as possible. Once we're done picking all that stuff off, then I'm gonna move down to the stuff that's down in the hair grass and around the substrate. My substrate's not super dirty, but Kicking stuff up down there is inevitable and it's gonna release some waste into the tank. Now we're gonna move on to the next two things that are messier than what we just did. First thing I'm gonna do is scrape that green spot that's growing on the back panel of the glass. There's a little bit on the front of the glass too. I just tend to do this like every other day or whenever I see stuff pop up. So it's not as big of an issue as the stuff hiding in the back. Sometimes I do this while I have the water changer going. Sometimes I don't. It's not a huge deal if this floats around the aquarium. It's not gonna spread and cause any more problems. Now let's get to the potentially messy messiest thing we're going to do, and that is remove the pinnatophyta. Before I got in here, I wasn't sure if we were going to uproot this whole thing or if we were just gonna go through and try trimming it first. I just went ahead and started my siphon anyway, so that way if I was gonna pull this out, then I could quickly siphon up any of the debris that pops up because of that. And it turns out we kind of did a hybrid of both. Like if you pull out the plant really slowly and contain the detritus and the material down at the bottom of the aquarium, then you don't need to have the siphon going at the same time. This is just kind of a little hybrid trick, I guess, to try and remove stuff if you're gonna be extra messy, but you don't have to be, you can go slow. By following this little method, I guess it is, you can help reduce the amount of waste that ends up in your water column and then eventually back into your filter or covering the surfaces of your tank. It can just kind of help you out and keep things a little bit more tidy when you're doing your maintenance. Here's another tip for you guys when you're changing your water. So if you're trying to check the temperature that you're putting back into the tank, grab your handy dandy infrared thermometer, put a beaker underneath your Python system that is inevitable 
inevitably, I'm sure gonna drip. That way you can check to see if the temperature is pretty much the same as what you were taking out. You can also hit the tube right before it returns to the tank. I'm not sure how accurate this is. It seems to be a little bit warmer. Maybe it is warmer here at this portion, but I wouldn't trust it as much as the previous method. When I'm filling the tank back up like this is when I usually put in dechlorinator. As I've mentioned it before, I have super low chlorine levels, like undetectable. So I don't need to do this 100%. So this is a step that I still do sometimes from time to time. You never know when the wastewater treatment facility is gonna switch things up on you. So of course we use Fritz because they're a channel sponsor and I like to use the Pond Guard because it's more concentrated than the regular stuff. We do have about four Ember Tetras randomly in this tank. It was originally my plan to remove these fish because we are bringing in new fish that could have diseases. Hopefully they don't, but you never know. It's just impossible to get these four Ember Tetras out. The Aquascape definitely doesn't help, right? Like we can't be moving around a net too much in this tank or we're just gonna destroy everything. So these guys are gonna have to stay in here. At the end of the day, it's not a huge deal. If any of the fish that come in today have a sickness, we're gonna have to treat this whole tank anyway. We're not gonna be able to take them out and treat them in a separate tank. So, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. We're gonna cross our fingers and hope for the best. Hope that that doesn't happen. I also decided about halfway through this whole process that I was gonna trim up some of the Monte Carlo trees, which is something that you can mix in, you know, while you're doing your water change so you can suck up some plants. The python doesn't exactly make it the easiest thing in the world because it gets clogged up with stuff so easily, but um, kind of doing this at the wrong stage, it doesn't really matter though. I kicked on the skimmer and that's gonna help to collect like 90% of it and then we can just scoop it out. It's not really gonna add any mess to the tank, so you can kind of do this at any point to be honest. Boom, I think the tank is looking pretty good guys. That trim job really helped it out a little bit. I did a little bit too much of a rounded corner on this one, it's bugging me, but overall I think the tank looks pretty good. Redistributed a few pieces of the pinnatophyta into some of the corners, just I didn't want them blocking the lookways in the tank. And overall, I think we're pretty much ready for fish. So we'll cross our fingers that everything arrives on time tomorrow. We'll let the tank rest and do its thing. It's about to turn off here. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with the fish. I hope you enjoyed that almost unnecessary flashback, guys. But I think it's important to showcase, you know, what's going on with the tank since it's been a super long time. I think since you've really got to see anything from this thing. So here we go. First fish, we have 12 wild dwarf quarries. Gonna float them in here very carefully. Try and find a spot that the bag just chills. We got 30 ember tetras in here to match those four pesky ones that are still in there. And then we have three pearl garamis. I thought this would be just a perfect fish to be the main swimmer up at the top. They're looking super healthy and feisty. They wanna get out of there, but we gotta let them float for 20 minutes, get them temperature acclimated. I'm gonna try and reposition these bags with two hands. So we'll see you in 20 minutes. Fish still have a little bit of time left on their temperature acclimation, but I wanted to remind you guys that whenever you buy fish online, if you are to do this, you know, you're gonna get your bags home and they're gonna be closed like this. You might be tempted to open them up while you temperature acclimate, but you never wanna do that with fish that you shipped. And that's because the fish in the bag, I don't care how long it's been, a day, two days, three days, hopefully it's never longer than that. But while they're in the bag, they're producing waste. There's ammonia in the bag with them. When you open the bag, that's gonna cause the CO2 to escape, that's gonna cause the pH to go up, and that's gonna make the ammonia that's in the bag a lot more toxic than at the levels it was in the bag because it's all a pH dependent thing. If you're just bringing your fish home from the pet store, they've been in the bag for like an hour, you don't really have to worry about this. It's when you start getting into that 24 hour, 48 hour, 36 hour, it just gets worse with time. So while we probably would be safe, these guys have been in the bag for, I, I don't know, maybe 18 hours, we're probably okay to open them. I don't think anything bad would happen, but we're just gonna be extra careful and pretend like there is a significant amount of ammonia in here that would cause problems. I don't know, I just always think it's better to be safe than sorry. That's why we did things like adding the dechlor when I didn't really think we needed to because I know my water and things like adding the nitrifying bacteria even though it's probably not gonna make a difference in this case. And it's why I also do subtle things like turn off the lights. We wanna be as nice to our fish as possible. They've had kind of a weird journey, even though uh, I'm sure they've done this before, right? To get to the fish store, unless they were bred by the fish store. I don't know, I'm getting into semantics here. We need to wait like five more minutes and then we should be good to go to check these guys out.
Once we got all the fish out of the bags and into the tank, I did notice that there was probably one DOA Cory that I missed in the bag. Not sure how I missed that, but I did. So once it's in the tank, it's pretty much out of the DOA policy that the wet spot has. No big deal, it's just one fish. It's unfortunate, but even though they were only in the bags for one day, I mean, things happen. Nature is weird sometimes, and this fish just wasn't fit to make it to my tank. The wet spot does have a pretty good DOA policy, so if I would have noticed this and been able to take a picture of it in the unopened bag, then I probably could have got store credit for it or some type of a refund. I obviously can't do that now because I didn't catch it and we put them in the tank, but they have a really good policy for that. You just have to be observant, catch things in the bag before you open them, and then you'll be taken care of. I mean, 99.9% .9 of the fish that we got showed up in pretty much perfect condition, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But why did we decide to buy these fish online instead of just going to the wet spot? Well. First of all, I don't live super close to the wet spot. If I'm going to decide to go there and buy fish, it's pretty much an entire day thing. You know, you have your car ride there and then back, and when you're coming back, you're pretty much always hitting rush hour. That can add up to an extra hour. Plus, you know, you go to the fish store and then you're there for at least an hour, probably two. You got the gas money that it takes you to get there. All of these factors I figured into the whole fact that I'm paying $30 for shipping. And when I did that math, I just came to the realization that paying $30 for shipping is probably cheaper than gas and time combined. Not to mention if I go to the fish store, and I know you know what I'm talking about with this, you pretty much always spend more money than you were intending to. So I avoid that problem combined with all the other things, it just kind of made sense to do this. Going to the fish store is a pastime of fish keeping. You know what I'm talking about. So if you live next door to a really good fish store that has what you want, then you know you don't need to buy fish online unless they don't have what you're looking for. That's always something that kind of circumvents all of this. If you're looking for something specific and all the stores in your area don't have it, then certainly, I mean, it might be worth it to you to pay extra for shipping. But during this whole process, I was also thinking about how applicable this would be to say somebody who lives on the other side of the country. The shipping for me, yeah, was $30, but how much is it for somebody that lives across the country in New York? Well, I tested it, I went in there and it was only 10 extra dollars. So $40 for that UPS overnight shipping. And I'm assuming that this is just how it is. It's looking like it's pretty much a max of $40, no matter where you are in the US. I think the last question somebody might have about this whole thing is how reputable is the business, the wet spot? And I can't tell you the whole history of the business, but they have been around for a super long time and their website says that they've been shipping fish since like 2005. So if this video has piqued your interest about buying fish online, all you have to do is go to thewetspottropicalfish.com and start going through stuff. Set up an account, check out what they got. They seem to have a pretty good selection. And yeah, they might have some fish that you're really looking for and you haven't been able to find. It's pretty cool how it works. You just go into the fish, you have a size option. So for certain fish, they're gonna have different sizes available. And then you have the sex of the fish, so you can get a male, female, or an unsexed fish. A lot of them just come as unsexed because most people don't really care like what the sex of their neon tetras are. Some of the fish also have the option to get them in a breeding pair, which is pretty cool. And then the last thing you can select is the origin. So on a lot of fish, it's gonna be tank raised or wild, there's both, but a lot of them are just gonna be strictly tank raised or strictly wild. So yeah, I had a pretty good experience with the whole thing. And I think, you know, if you live like an hour, two hours, three hours from a fish store, then it definitely makes sense if you're comparing the 30 or $40 shipping to the amount of gas that you're spending going to the fish store. Now, nothing Nothing can replace the experience of going to the fish store. I'm not trying to convince you to avoid that. That's something that's really special and fish people know what I'm talking about here. You guys know. But this was the best option for me at this specific time. I'm not gonna abandon going to the fish store by any means, but just know that this is a viable option. Shipping fish in the mail has been done for forever and there's a lot of people that are really good at it. And so if you're looking for fish online, Check out the wet spot tropical fish. All right, next day alert. The fish, I think, are doing pretty good, man. They're scared of the camera and definitely of me running up on the tank like that, but they seem to be doing pretty good. I haven't seen any other dead fish in the tank, which is always a good sign, second day, but as you know, 
it could just take a little bit longer. So we're still watching the tank very closely. Everybody seems to be loving it in here though. The Corys are definitely starting to be less shy. There's still some up in the front here doing their thing, not moving. The Grommies are having fun. They're still kind of skittish when I come up to the tank like that. So we'll see him here in a little bit with some B-roll. It's gonna take probably a few more days for the embers to really color up and match the other four that are super dark red. But yeah, I'm super happy with the way things turned out. I think it's time that we feed them some food though. Let's go for some frozen cubes. We'll pop out a couple here. Maybe just start with one. Let that baby brine shrimp just melt off the bone there. It's gonna be impossible to see on camera. We'll try and get this guy to float back to the front here. Little mini feeding frenzy going on, but we gotta feed two other types of fish. You know, we gotta feed them some legit fish food. So we're gonna toss in a couple pellets for the quarries. Perfect sinking food for them. Starts to sink right away, right in their spot here. Hopefully they find that. And then we'll try a little bit of the community for the Garamis. The Garamis made quick work of that community food and then the Ember Tetris came in and ate up all the small stuff. And I designed the food to be that way on purpose. It's for community tanks with different sizes of fish. Bigger fish get the bigger stuff and the smaller fish get the smaller stuff. Anything that makes it to the bottom, you know, the Cory Cats can eat. But we went ahead and gave them their own pellets. They're still checking it out. If these wild Corys decide to go for this food, then you know it's good stuff. But I'm not even worried about it. They don't seem super interested right now, but it's a brand new food to them. So any fish that you have where you're feeding them the same food for a long time and then you switch it up, they might be a little hesitant to it at first. You gotta keep that in mind. Even the Garamis took a second to figure out that it was something that they should eat. And then the Ember Tetras, I mean, they were pretty much on it right away. They didn't need any convincing. All right, did I convince you to try buying fish online? Maybe you don't have any need to do so. So don't do that if that's the case. Just go to your local fish store, have a good time. But if you're in a bind and you need some fish and you don't have the time to go drive all the way to the fish store and back and accidentally spend 300 more dollars than you wanted to spend then maybe this is a good option for you So I hope this video helped you guys check out links I'll have them down in the description comments all the places where links go so you can check out the wet spot And I'm gonna get back to enjoying my new fish in their awesome little tank. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time